I was told he was a super cop. He wanted to clean the streets up. He was about justice. He wanted to be a Chicago police officer so he could fix things. He absolutely liked helping others, you know. He always wanted to make things safe. He really liked to help people because a lot of people in our family are the police. And then like he like knew like that's like what he wanted to do. And he volunteered for District 11, which is like one of the worst districts and it just shows a lot about his character. He was a wonderful husband. He was always silly. He was always funny. Everything was to make me laugh. Everything was to make everyone laugh. Good father, of course. Very accepting of everyone. He was wholehearted with everything. He would play video games with us and watch movies with us, and he would always spend time with us. And then when Grace came along, he was thrilled. And then when he found out it was going to be a girl, he was even more thrilled. My doorbell was ringing 7 in the morning, 6 in the morning. I remember waking up and someone told me that there was an accident. It's just waking up and everyone being so sad. I remember having Grace, holding Grace, and being told, you know, there was an accident and that Mike didn't make it and um, we needed to get to the hospital. My Uncle John, he's the one that told, like, basically told me what death was and he explained to me that your dad was not going to come home that night. Drunk driver ran a red light and um, hit him really hard. Like, I didn't understand at the time that like people have like professions that are, are dangerous, that people can pass from this. I portrayed him as like a hero, kind of, or you never see Spider-Man die, like you never see Superman die. It was just like a weird to know that like he's passed away and that you have to like move on and miss him every day. I think I always knew I wanted to be a police officer. My father was a, a Chicago police officer. He also enjoyed helping the everyday people. I always felt that justice had to be served and we had to get the bad guy and make him pay for that, for that crime. Every night he came to my room and gave me a kiss and said, I love you, I'll see you in the morning. We came across uh, four young looking males and my partner wanted to stop him for a curfew violation. He wanted to get some curfews. Just as I got out of the car, one of the, one of the young individuals took off and started running. I chased him down an alley through a vacant lot and when I shined my flashlight on him, I asked, told him to show me your hands, show me your hands and that's when I saw the gun come up. Shot put, 10-1, 10-1. Didn't want to give me your location, Peaks in the what? And the very first shot struck me center mass in my vest. The second shot struck me underneath my armpit on my left side, underneath my vest. We get an ambulance over there, we get an ambulance. Sergeant Kappa was my sergeant that night. I saw right away that I was in uh, serious danger, I was losing a lot of blood, and he made the uh, executive decision right there on the scene that uh, they were gonna pick me up and throw me in the back of his car and he was gonna race me to the hospital. Driving the Trinity! Yeah, we got somebody driving the Trinity, you want to drive the Trinity? He started putting as much blood back into me as he could and just tried to get me stabilized enough to get me into an ambulance ride to get me to Christ Hospital where uh, life-saving surgery would be needed to stop the bleeding in my, inside my chest. And that's when Father Brandt said, would you like for me to give him last rites? And I wasn't ready to do that yet. So they had to saw off four inches of my collarbone so that they can get at the uh, artery and, and clamp it off. I whispered in his ear that I loved him and that I'll be waiting when you get done. I was in intensive care for three days. Um, however, I was released from the hospital after only eight days. Ultimately, being shot that night cost me my career. It, it's been four years since the incident and I'm still uh, having issues with it. Um, I miss it. I miss it a lot. I miss the blue lights. The financial support that the memorial has given us, I mean, I, I can't thank them enough. The Memorial Foundation stepped up to help with bills right away so that we wouldn't fall behind. Not just financial. To me, the financial, it's so, it was so important and still is so important, but the Memorial Foundation has taught myself and my children exactly what it is to be a police family. Thank you so much. 
uh, for giving to the Chicago Police Memorial Foundation. I'm going to donate to the program. I feel like I'm obligated to donate to the program because I believe in the future that there's going to be another kid in my situation. You guys don't have to do any of this, and you guys just choose to because you guys care a lot about us. That's what being a family is all about. You do what you can for the people that you love. You do what you can for the people who do for you.